This region attracts recreational anglers from around the world, but the traditions of commercial fishing also have deep roots here. We're riding along with Gene and Nick Santini, a father and son team carrying on their family heritage in the fertile waters of Punta Gorda, Florida. Today, we're chasing blue crabs to find out what it takes to get these tasty crustaceans from all the way out here to a popular local fish house and onto tables as far away as Maryland and California. Open up our first pot. Tell us what we're gonna do here, Nick. Um, hopefully catch some crabs there. That's, <laughs> that's the plan. These have been doing pretty good all this through here. Um, you know, we got a little bit of rain last week and that seemed to help. How long do these soak typically? Um, we pull every other day. See, and that's not a good one. Those are just bait crabs there. Those aren't good. They're not big enough to eat. So when you say bait crabs, you mean for uh, like yeah. uh, fishermen, like yeah. tarpon yeah. bait? Yeah, these will be, uh, like that's a perfect size for a tarpon crab right there. Oh yeah. Yeah. And that's the time of year, tarpon are one of the most sought after game fish around, aren't they? Yep, yeah, they are. And then um, like this one right here, if you feel him, he was a softy probably yesterday, and he's been getting hard. It oh, takes yeah. him it takes him about 24 hours to get all the way hard, so he's no good. Like if he'd be a little softer, you could sell him as a soft shell. But since he's you know getting hard like that, kind of in between. Yeah, pretty much a paper shell they call it. And um, you know that's a decent trap. Those are both number ones. Nice. See, like these are both. This is mark right here, six and a half inches. As long as he's from there to that mark, these are both good number one, good hard. See how they have like the darkish color to their belly? Yep. The lines, those are both good hard crabs, both of them. So when you say number one, that means like that's a high grade? Yeah, that's a, anything, a number one crab has to be over six and a half inches and they gotta be a male. Those are the most expensive crabs there. And then anything under six and a half is a number two and any female is a number two, no matter what size. So that's how, that's how you grade your crabs. Gene and Nick lock into a rhythm that makes crabbing look routine. But make no mistake, it's demanding work that doesn't begin and end with a day on the water that normally has the Santinis pulling, shaking, baiting, and resetting hundreds of traps. Now, they're not big on taking breaks, but we managed to talk them into a short time out to share a little more of their story. Uh, what would you say to people that just like to sit down and eat a plate of crabs uh, that they may not realize what, what goes into it, getting it to a plate in front of somebody? All you've seen was picking up crab, shaking a crab. Well, these traps get dirty. You gotta wash them traps. Every day you're washing traps. Or you're not gonna catch no crab. We're washing traps, we're building traps, building we're traps. catching bait. It's always we're something. Working on the boat, I mean, things don't last forever. We're always fixing trailers and tires and trucks and this and that. and. Just to, just to be able to go every day, just to get out here, you know. It's, it's a, a life. I mean, we enjoy being on the water. Well, as far as the two of you, how long have you two been doing this together? Forever. Forever. Ever since it, I, I, I've been on the boat with him. It's like I, I was, said, you know, when I was commercial fishing all the time, I had a box that I stood on. With a steering wheel. I had a tower. I had that box, and it was big enough to stick him in. I I'm not in that and, box. I've been on the water since I was a month yeah, old. and I'd I check mean, on him every now and then. He'd be in there just asleep, and I'd go on. Yep. Or he'd been on the boat all of his life, you know, and I enjoy being able to work with him every day, you know. Because mm -hmm. I, I, you know, retired a few years back, and this is all we did. Well, from what I've seen, you haven't retired, Gene. <laughs> yeah. Well, like I said, I, I, I told my wife, I said, I'm not retired. I'm in that casket. So your family's been commercial fishing for five generations now. How did that all start? That uh, goes back a lot of years. As far back as they can trace it, we're fishing here in Florida. They had schooners. <clears throat> they take, you know, fruit, vegetables, stuff all the way down to the Keys, and they bring people back and back and forth. And my dad was in it, and my uncle and my dad were mackerel fishermen. And when they weren't mackerel fishing, they were catching porpoises for the sea aquarium. And my uncle Milton is the one that caught and trained the actual flipper that made the movie. Really? Huh. He used to love watching that as a kid, man. Yeah, that one that you know had Chuck Connors and sure, Mitzi. that original. That was Mitzi the original. Was the name of it. Her name, it was actually Mitzi. Real name was her name. It wasn't flipper. 
So before Flipper, there was Mitzi, and that was your... No, Mitzi was Flipper. They just named it they Flipper. They just changed the name. I actually swam with Flipper before Flipper was movie star. <laughs> <laughs> now I got 17 stitches under my chin from her. Well, you know how they bucked? She hit me, cut me on his chin. I was just a kid, baby. Cut <laughs> stitches from Flipper. I'm a little yeah. jealous. I, I don't have a star <laughs> that even compares to that, man. The Sea Aquarium in, um, down there in... Um, Marathon, Florida. Right. Like we went down there, and they still got Santini stuff everywhere. And still got Santini. They had a porpoise, porpoise named Santini. Santini. Yeah. Nice. And we That's went a big. Then we told them who we were, and they treated us like royalty. When you're not crabbing, what other kind of fishing do you do? Um, we cast net. We catch sandbrim. We catch mullet. We catch sheephead. We catch jacks. Um, you know, cobia at times. It all depends. Ladyfish. You know, a little bit of everything. Whatever is in season. And when it comes to these so-called Maryland blue crabs. I heard an estimate that as many as 70 to 80% of Maryland blue crabs are actually from other places like Florida and yeah, Louisiana, the Gulf of Mexico, essentially. Yeah. We have people from Maryland come down here and they'll go eat at Peace River Seafood or wherever else or go buy them and they'll say, oh, your, your crabs are good. They're just not as good as our crabs. And it's like pulling teeth trying to get them to understand, look, a lot of the blue cra blue crabs that you're eating are from here, They're, you know, or from Florida in general. Yeah. Most crabs come, why do they are from Florida or Louisiana? That's the two biggest places they get them. The tradition of fishing in your family being passed on through five generations and the heritage of it in this part of Florida and this part of the country, uh, what's the future of it? You know, it, nobody really knows. I mean, the way the laws change and, you know, it seems to us like they're trying to push the commercial fishermen out of Florida. That's how it seems to me. But then, you know, that's why this is a good thing what you're doing because if you push all the commercial people out, what are you going to eat? Where do you want your seafood to come from? Do you want to be imported? Because the quality control and other, you know, across the world is not near what it is here. You don't know what you're eating. You don't know how fresh it is, you know. Don't push the commercial guy out if you want to eat your seafood. I mean, it's got to come from somewhere. That's definitely some food for thought. And thanks to the Santinis, we know exactly where today's catch came from and where it's headed. It's a well-known destination that attracts loyal customers who appreciate fresh seafood served with down-home hospitality. All right, so we're finally here at Peace River Seafood. We got these crabs. We got to witness the whole operation, getting them out of the fertile waters of the Peace River. What's the next step in the journey for these crabs? All right, so we got to weigh our crabs in. They come in two grades. We have our number ones and number twos. Our number ones are our males, and they're six and a quarter inch and up. And then our number twos are our male and female mix. Mm -hmm. So we have them in two different grades because we ship them out. We send them over to the East Coast and put them on a plane up to Maryland. And wow. most importantly, we cook them and feast on them here. The menu's got a ton of stuff on it, but the crabs, I mean, that's, that's sort of the star of the show here. Is that right? Absolutely, because we're out to support our local crabbers. We have a lot of respect for commercial fishermen, and very rarely are you actually eating Florida seafood in mm. Florida seafood restaurants. So we kind of have a, if we can't catch it, we don't have it situation. We'd have, rather not have it on the menu if it doesn't come off the boat. Right. So we have very high standards. It's got to be fresh, and we're going to give you big portions of fresh seafood, best in the state. And I'll tell you, it's, you know, learning what those guys do every day. I don't think people have the slightest clue for the most part. That's why we really wanted to share the story about the process and the work that goes into getting these crabs from, you know, from out there to here and, and to tables across the United States. So I'm going to pick out some winners here or some losers, depending on whether or not you're a crab. <laughs> Everybody's a winner when it comes to crabs. I like this guy right here for some reason. While Sean picks some crabs for lunch, Larry shows me what else is on the menu today. We have all types of different fish that comes in every day. Today's fresh catch is red golf grouper. He's gonna fillet it for you, and we're gonna put it on a bun and you can eat it later. So Kim here, he's what we call a fishmonger or a professional fish cutter. He spends all day cutting fish, three, four, 500 pounds a day. Wow. So he's got it down. Yes, he can do it blindfolded. Been doing it since 1973. You're literally going to be eating a grouper right off the knife. Doesn't get any fresher than that. Doesn't make you special either. Every customer gets that. We, that's what we specialize in, is fresh seafood. If we can't catch it, we don't have it. On our way to the table, we stopped by the fish market where Peace River Seafood got its start. 
So if you want to cook your own, just stop by and grab their fresh catch of the day. You know, there's just this real sense of nostalgia here that I, I gotta say, it really takes you back to simpler times in old Florida. It absolutely does. It, when you walk in the door, you're walking into somebody's home because this was built in 1926 and it and I've had people come and tell me I was born in this house wow. which is so cool yeah, it is. and it's a very old building the only other building I know that even compares to in age would be the old courthouse which was 1928 so we got them beat by two years so you get locals coming back here you got people coming from far away it's a destination they come here for the food and the experience and the vibe of this place that's not just my imagination right? great you said that because we're considered destination dining we're what we call fresh, not fancy. Yeah. So we tell you not to wear your good shirt. And if you go home hungry, it's your own fault. Yeah. Or if you go home clean, you didn't do it right. Speaking of doing it right, tell us about your legendary gumbo. Well, the thing is, with the Gator gumbo, you got to serenade the marinade. We sing and put love uh, okay. in the room, that and TLC. that's what makes it good. Yeah. Gotcha. And here it is, the Gator gumbo. Yeah. Oh, make some room for that. So wow. there's crab meat, shrimp, gator, sausage, oh my and my God. husband's favorite ingredient is okra. I have to say I've been to every state in the Union, been down to New Orleans, and I've had gumbo from all over. That is the best gumbo I've ever had. Thank that you. That is no lie. That is absolutely fantastic. I've had so many Whoa. gator bites, gator this and gator that. They're always chewy and... That's almost like a... What's the word I want to use for it? It's almost like a roast. It's like a pot roast. Yeah. Like a pot roast. During season, we could make four or five big batch of this a day. That was delicious. Awesome. Well, you guys, I got to head out. Everything is going crazy around here. So I'm going to go make sure your crabs are doing good. Have a great day. Thank Thanks you, so Kelly. Much, Kelly. And that was just the start. Ah. <laughs> Here we go. Thank I got an you. interesting story about this plate. This is what we call the night out at Whorehouse Point. A lot of our menu items are named after locations, and this is the one that gets all the kiggles. It was a fish shack. There's still the pylons there to prove really? it. And it used to be a whorehouse. Somehow it got mysteriously burnt down many years ago. What it is is a dozen oysters from Apalachicola, a dozen clams from Cedar Key, and a pound of the Gulf shrimp. And if you need your oysters shucked or anything like that, we, that's a table service that we provide. There Some people go. want to shuck their own oysters, but we'll be happy to do it for you. Oh man, you're not shocking around there, buddy. Look at that. <laughs> wow. So this is a great meal. Some people split it. Um, some people keep it all to themselves. And a lot of times, uh, larger parties will get it for an appetizer. That is just the right appetizer for the catch of the day. What do we got here? Oh, hey. oh. thank you, Michelle. You're welcome. All right, Brooks. Remember Ooh. that grouper oh. we filleted on the dock for you? Kim, I believe, was the man that yes. filleted it for us. Yep. We slapped that on a bun, wow. and that's your real deal grouper sandwich. And not only is it fresh, but it's actually really good for you. And now for the moment we've all been waiting for. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Michelle. Now we're about to get dirty. Remember the crabs you picked out when we got here? Those crabs you were catching this morning? Yeah, man. Now it's time to eat them. Did we do that? We would bite the ones up? I wouldn't do that. No, if all you right. want, I could give you a lesson. You yeah. might. You might knock your teeth out. And this is a case anybody gets out of line. <laughs> what I do is I put my thumb on this back fin and use this point pull that top right off, okay? You don't want to eat these. These are the lungs. So once we get to this point, you want to pop these in half. There's your cluster, okay? Your white meat is right here, and then you got your claw. At this point, I take the knife and cut down the middle of that, and then here's all your meat. Oh, come on. There's the goodness right there. Yep. There you go. We steam our crabs 13 minutes, not a second more or a second less. It's the perfect temperature and the perfect time to, to lock the flavor into these crabs. Every day, especially during the summer, you can come in here and eat all the crabs you can for $30 a person. Oh, man. The record is 17 buckets. One person no. held by one person. I don't know about 17 buckets, but I'd give it a shot. I'm glad you guys were here. Yeah. I'm glad you got to experience it. And thank you so much for highlighting the commercial fishing side of it. Yeah. Because 
a lot of people don't know what it actually takes to bring it to the table. And we have a lot of respect for what the fishermen do. Um, and it's almost a dying breed um, because of the hard work and the regulations they put on people. But as long as they'll catch it, we'll serve it back to the people. And that's what Peace River Seafood is all about. Let's cheers to that. Cheers, cheers. Peace River Seafood. <laughs> the adventure now we're using local wildlife. That's right. Thanks, brother. Best I've ever had. You guys aren't still hungry, are you? To view full episodes, visit adventureandwildlife.com.